Hi, my name is KD. Thank you for joining the part two of the session on OCI events service. If you have not seen the part one of this session, I encourage you to uh, do that. In part one, we looked at uh, what events are and what OCI event service is and uh, why do we need it. Uh, and we also looked at an overview of the OCI event service and the key features uh, of this service as well. In this session, I'm going to dive deeper into the uh, core constructs within the OCI event service. These are the events uh, themselves, and then there are uh, rules and actions. Uh, we will dive deeper into these concepts, uh, and we will look into uh, the IAM policies that you need to use. Uh, so essentially, we're going to get into the how of how the OCI event service works. Um, and we are going to look at uh, the metrics that this service uh, provides. We are going to look at some of the common uh, use cases for this service uh, in conjunction with uh, uh, some of the other services that it works well with, including the streaming service, the function service, and notification service. And then we are going to look at uh, some reference examples, uh, architectures of these use cases, followed by a, an actual uh, uh, demo towards the end. So let's get started. Uh, this is all covered in part one, so I'm going to skip uh, these uh, first few slides and start uh, with a brief summary, right? Of uh, essentially, uh, an event is something that has happened. Uh, each event is a fact. Uh, which is indis indisputable and immutable. Once it has happened, you can't really change it. And uh, uh, the event describes a state change that occurred to the entity. Uh, and the events can be uh, user-initiated uh, CRUD operations, uh, something that it, uh, getting created or deleted, etc. Uh, these, in the context of uh, OCI event service, these could be events related to resource lifecycle state changes uh, and uh, also some uh, system level events in OCI. Uh, all these events are uh, automatically uh, flowing into the OCI event service and uh, the service uh, checks them to see if they match any user created rules. So rules are the second key concept. So you filter uh, against those rules and if the event matches a rule, uh, the user defined action is triggered and action is the third key concept here uh, and uh, if uh, the rule there is a rule match an action is triggered if there, there is no rule match then the events are dropped uh, from the context of the OCI event service in this case uh, and each event itself uh, is based on the open source uh, uh, cloud events uh, standard, which is uh, part of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Uh, it's a project there, and uh, they have a uh, open source standard that we follow for the OCI events service. And in part one, I, I went uh, into detail on why that is important. But each event itself uh, uh, uses JSON objects uh, to, to represent these interesting uh, things that have happened. Uh, so let's uh, actually look at an example um, event, right? And events all have the same set of top level attributes, which are known as the event envelope. Uh, there are things like the event type, uh, the versioning, uh, which version are being, is being followed, the source of the event, uh, the OCI, a resource that generated the event in this case. Uh, there is a unique event ID. There is a timestamp, uh, and then you know some metadata as well. Uh, and then there is the payload of the event, uh, and the payload appears within the uh, data attribute that you see towards the bottom. Uh, uh, the information in this field is important because. Uh, uh, this is where uh, you uh, isolate one event from other or uh, distinguish different events and you can write filter against uh, the data in this payload and these filters are uh, essentially what the 
uh, rules are uh, that we will look at next and based on these rules you take specific action so this uh, uh, the information in this uh, uh, data uh, field depends on uh, the service which produced the event and the uh, event type which has been requested. So uh, useful information there. Uh. Okay, so now let's look at uh, uh, rules. Uh, an event rule is a, uh, is a user-defined filter on uh, one or more uh, field values within an event. We looked at the data payload, uh, so you can uh, write uh, filters uh, against it. Uh, and based on the uh, rule matching, uh, user-defined actions are invoked. Uh, rules can have more or one or more than one actions defined to execute when they are uh, triggered. Uh, rules filter all incoming events and based on the rule definition decide which action to uh, take on that um, uh, event. So you know there is uh, the rules themselves they apply to uh, events in the compartment in which you create them and any child compartments as well. Uh, you should create a rule in the compartment with the resource you want to which has the resource you want to monitor and, uh, and then you have to specify where to deliver the matching events. So uh, let's look at an example. Let's say you have um, a compartment called IT compartment, which has some uh, resources uh, that you're interested in, and uh, there are some events related to those sources that you want to uh, write rules on, or on and then take actions on. So you would uh, write a uh, a rule uh, that uh, uh, filters for, uh, let's say, autonomous data warehouse backup events. Uh, and you can say when the uh, backup event uh, starts, uh, you want to filter on that rule and take an action, which can be a notification. And when the backup ends, you want to filter, write a rule that filters on that uh, event and, and then send another notification. So you would write uh, this rule within the IT compartment. Uh, you can write it in the in the root compartment as well, but in this case, you can also write it in the IT department where the resource actually lies. Uh, and uh, events does not actually have any requirements on the location of the action resources. So you could um, specify uh, when you want to take an action in the rule, you can specify a topic in the operations compartment, a completely different compartment, uh, as uh, as where you want to deliver any matching events and take uh, take those um, actions. <coughs> uh, you obviously uh, need to specify uh, the right uh, IAM uh, policies uh, with with proper permissions to be able to. Uh, write uh, rules um, and uh, for the event service to deliver uh, these uh, uh, actions, uh, events to the action resources. Uh, another important uh, thing here is uh, is the use of tags. Uh, with events, you can use tags to target resources. Uh, you target resources by adding the tag to a filter uh, in a rule. A filter tag helps you uh, helps you in automation by targeting only the resources that contain a particular tag. So uh, for example, let's say that uh, you have uh, lots of uh, resources related to a particular service. Uh, let's say uh, you have uh, several database instances in your OCI tenancy, uh, but only uh, there are only a few that are the uh, uh, critical ones, uh, and you can tag all of these uh, as the operations uh, with the with the operations tag, and then you know in in, in the OCI event service when you uh, write a rule, uh, you can trigger a particular action uh, for resources that only contain this operations tag, uh, so you don't have to. Uh, so it just gives you additional uh, level of flexibility in writing your uh, rules in the event service. Uh, the uh, maximum number of a uh, maximum number of rules a user can create in this tenancy. The default limit is fifty, but uh, you can uh, uh, request a, uh, a service limit increase in this case. 
uh, as we discussed, rules uh, also specify an action to trigger when the uh, filter finds the matching events. Um, actions uh, essentially are um, uh, responses you define for uh, event matches. Uh, you can have multiple actions uh, uh, per rule. Uh, there is um, a defined set of actions that customers can choose from uh, to execute. Uh, and uh, these uh, actions can be uh, invoked using uh, three services right now, which is the uh, trigger uh, functions using the uh, functions, OCI functions service. Uh, you can publish notifications using the OCI notification service and you can output uh, the event to a stream in the OCI streaming service. <coughs> so, you know, uh, six services right now as the time, at the time of this recording that uh, generate events that OCI uh, event service uh, can handle. Uh, these are the compute service, database service, networking. There is uh, uh, block storage, object storage, and notification service. Um, and you write rules and take uh, uh, actions. The action resources can belong to the function service, uh, the notification service, and the streaming uh, service. All right, so let's uh, look at the IAM policies that you need to work with events. Uh, the first uh, set of policies, uh, there are two distinct types. Uh, the first one is uh, to, uh, to have IAM policies for the event service itself. Uh, to create rules, you must authorize uh, the event service to deliver event messages to action resources. Uh, which can be any combination of uh, topics, streams, or uh, uh, functions. So, you know, the, there are three kinds of policies that you see here uh, that enable the delivery of, uh, of these uh, messages. And then the second set of IAM policies is for uh, uh, users uh, and uh, this set of policies lets users that are not administrators to work with the uh, rules. Uh, and uh, these users must be authorized uh, to manage or uh, read the rules. And this list uh, shows uh, uh, the different uh, types of IAM policies that you would uh, need uh, for the users to take, uh, to be able to do different things with the OCI event service. Uh, for example, if you want to allow users in the DevOps group to create rules that triggered action resources, you must write a corresponding IAM policy that allows them to manage uh, these rules. Uh, in terms of uh, the metrics, the events, OCI event service emits metrics on how many events are published, uh, how many are matched, and how many events were successfully routed to corresponding actions. Uh, and uh, uh, you can view these uh, metrics in the telemetry dashboards uh, in the OCI console. And uh, uh, they give you nice, uh, uh, rich graphical uh, views into uh, how your uh, rules are behaving. In terms of uh, uh, Event, OCI event service guarantees. Uh, there are a few things to uh, notice here uh, that uh, that might impact how you use this service. Uh, if the if an event is actually ingested, uh, the service uh, guarantees that it will be evaluated at least uh, at least once against the rules that you have written to filter against it. And if uh, the filter matches or the rule is matched. Uh, the OCI event service is going to guarantee at least uh, one delivery attempt uh, for the for all the actions that you have specified as part of the rules. Uh, remember, you can have more than one action per rule. Uh, but there are no guarantees of uh, uh, delivering uh, in in order or uh, the processing to happen in order. Uh, so you know uh, you should uh, design and write your um, uh, any glue logic or code accordingly. 
And if the action target or targets are not responsive, uh, the service will uh, retry uh, the delivery uh, for up to five hours or uh, there is an error called non-triable error. If that occurs, then it will not try anymore. Uh, and you know there there are uh, service metrics that that we discussed a little bit earlier that are generated. So you can uh, uh, you will get a failure metric uh, as part of that uh, 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 those uh, service metrics for OCI events. Uh, let me wrap this session here. Uh, in the next session, we are going to uh, look at. Uh, uh, some of the common use cases that uh, you can execute with the OCI events service. And uh, we'll look at some reference architecture, reference architectures uh, for these patterns. And then I'm going to show you a, a demo of the OCI events service in action. Thank you. And I uh, look forward to uh, having you join part three of this session.